in this video we are going to solve further questions of CSIR NAT June 2021 uh, paper and uh, we are solving part B now this exam was conducted in February uh, 2022 okay so uh, the first question is uh, the vector potential of an almost point like uh, magnetic uh, dipole located at origin is uh, okay so we are given uh, with this uh, vector potential and we know that uh, the magnetic field is actually given by a uh, curl of this vector potential okay uh, okay uh, where r theta phi denote the spherical polar coordinates and phi is the unit vector along phi direction a particle of mass m and charge q moving in the equatorial plane of the dipole uh, starts at time t equals 0 with an initial speed uh, v0 and an impact parameter b its instantaneous speed at a point of closest approach is okay so uh, the answer of this question will be uh, v0 and let me explain uh, why the answer will be v0 okay when we talk about magnetic fields so magnetic fields do not do a uh, work so the force applied by magnetic fields will not do any kind of work okay so if you kind of take the integral and uh, take it like from any point a to b it will not come out to be, it will come out to be zero let me actually explain why so let us just say uh, you have some kind of magnetic field uh, pointing coming out of this say screen okay and let's say uh, there is a particle of plus q charge and it is going in okay now what will happen is uh, we know that the Lorentz forces are given by q v cross v okay so we clearly uh, kind of understand from here that if v is in x direction uh, capital b is in uh, z direction then this fl will be in minus y direction or whatever the direction that we have come out of uh, after calculating this sum okay so clearly what uh, really happens is we kind of uh, are sure that fl will always be perpendicular to v and capital b okay so clearly we know that this force fl will always be perpendicular to the displacement that is the direction of velocity so when there is we already know when there is uh, this equation and we can actually write it like this f dl cos theta so when there is angle a uh, 90 degree then what will happen is the work done will come out to be zero and if work done is come out to be zero then there will be no change in the velocity of the particle therefore the particle will always have the velocity v naught that is actually given in the question okay so the answer will be v naught okay now let's come on to the next question so the uh, next question says a generic 3 by 3 real matrix A has eigenvalues 0, 1 and 6 and I the 3 by 3 identity matrix the quantity uh, that cannot be de determined from this information is okay so now let's come on to the first uh, option it says uh, can you determine this I plus A uh, inverse eigenvalues okay so we clearly know that when you actually add two matrices what happens is say it has I has uh, eigenvalues uh, 1 1 1 and k a has eigenvalues this 0 1 and 6 then the eigenvalues of the sum will be the sum of these eigenvalues so the eigenvalues will become 1 2 and 7 okay now clearly it is taking the inverse of these eigenvalues so after the inverse the eigenvalues will be inverted so they will become 1 upon 1 1 upon 2 and 1 upon 7 so clearly you can actually uh, calculate the eigenvalues of this expression 
Now let's come on to the option B. Uh, it says I plus A T A transpose A. So I can values of A transpose A plus I. Can you determine this? So uh, clearly you cannot actually determine this expression. Let me actually explain why. So uh, what happens is uh, A has some eigenvalues say k1, k2 and k3 now A transpose so A transpose will have the same eigenvalues as k1, k2 and k3 but but you should remember that A transpose A will not have the same eigenvalues like k1 square k2 square and k3 square so these will not be the eigenvalues of a transpose a you can actually check it by an example okay so these will not be equal to k1 square k2 square k3 square okay so clearly if you add i to a transpose a you cannot find a eigenvalues of this expression so this will be the correct option b now also uh, Option G is can see you can actually determine this. Uh, let me actually explain why. Uh, okay, so <coughs> we clearly know that if you take the determinant of a multiplication of two matrix, then it will come out to be determinant of A multiplied by determinant of B. So clearly you can actually find out the determinant of A transpose A because you can. Uh, find out the uh, determinant of A transpose which will be uh, the multiplication of the eigenvalues on it will come out to be 0 okay it will come out to be 0 and the determinant of A will be also 0 so the determinant of uh, A multiplied by B that is A transpose A will come out to be 0 now furthermore you can actually uh, determine the rank of matrix A because what rank actually means is how many eigenvalues you will have which are not zero so clearly you can actually find out it find it out from here now let us come on to the next question uh, the next question says in an experiment to measure the charge to mass ratio that is z upon m of the electron by thomson's method the values of reflecting electric field and the accelerating potential are uh, this and this respectively the magnitude of the magnetic field uh, that leads to zero deflection of the electron beam is closest to okay so uh, let us understand what is thomson's method so uh, what really happens in thomson's method is we have this say this is a magnetic field a magnet strong magnet and we have this uh, electric field okay so we have this magnetic field and from this side we have electric field and both of them are perpendicular to each other and what happens is uh, we accelerate electrons from this side okay from this side and if uh, the electron has velocity such that the magnitude the ratio of the magnitude of uh, electric field and magnetic field is equal to the velocity's magnitude then the particle will or the electron will come out over here without any deflection okay so this is the thomson's method now how do we get this equation it is a uh, very easy to calculate so uh, let us say we have the lorentz forces which are given by q e plus v cross b okay now uh, we know if the particle is coming out without any deflection that means the final force is zero okay so we can actually put it zero minus e electric field plus magnetic field uh, now you can actually uh, see from here that we can actually write something like this e equals minus v cross b okay now we already know that v cross b equals something like magnitude of v magnitude of magnetic field cos not sorry not cos theta it is sine sine theta now clearly from this uh, 
uh, we actually know that uh, uh, this angle between magnetic field and the electric field or uh, sorry uh, the angle between the particle's velocity and the magnetic field will be 90 degree so clearly we can actually put uh, sin theta equals 1 so what will happen is we will get some kind of expression like this you don't have to worry about the negative sign because it just tells you that the these forces uh, that is electric force and magnetic force will be in opposite direction so we will get this kind of equation okay uh, enough of the theory now let us come on to the question so what will happen is since there is this accelerating potential what will what it will does is it will accelerate the electron and it will give it some potential energy not potential energy it, it will give it some kinetic energy actually so we have half mv square equals qv and this is that is how it will actually provide it a uh, kinetic energy and you can actually write the expression of v from over here so you will get something like square root of 2 e upon m v okay so this will be the equation now you can actually put the value of everything okay so v will come out to be uh, the magnitude of v will come out to be 2 times 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 16 divided by okay so it will be minus 19 actually 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 and v will be 150 okay now we know what the electric field value is it is uh, 6 into 10 to the power 6 okay so clearly we can actually find out the magnitude of uh, magnetic field and it will be 6 into 10 to the power 6 newton per coulomb divided by square root of 2 into 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 divided by 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 into 150 and it will, it will come out to be close to 0 0.8 tesla so this one will be the right answer now let us come on to the next question so this question says the Hamiltonian of a particle of mass m is uh, in one dimension is given by this equation so Hamiltonian is actually given by this equation where x uh, sorry not x lambda is greater than 0 is a constant if e1 and e2 respectively denote the ground state energy of the particle for lambda equals 1 and lambda equals 2 in appropriate units the ratio of e2 divided by e1 is best approximated by okay so what we have is uh, we have to actually find out the equation of energy first of all so what really happens is this Hamiltonian is nothing but the energy so Hamiltonian uh, operate it is actually an operator which when operated with the psi that is the wave function it will give you the energy so for finding out the energy what we'll do is we'll actually uh, do the same stuff that we did with one of the previous question okay so what you will do is you will actually find the expression for p so for finding out the expression for p we can actually do something like rearranging of these equations so we have e square upon 2m equals e minus lambda x cube okay so clearly you can actually write it like p square or let us just write p equals the square root of 2m e minus lambda x to the power cube okay so now uh, I would do some of the same previous stuff what we'll do is we can actually uh, take it take this thing out a little to m e and we'll have something like 1 minus lambda upon e x cube okay now uh, as we uh, did with the previous question we will have to actually find out the turning points over here so how do we find the turning points 
uh, it is pretty easy for finding out the turning points so what are turning points turning points are the points where all the energy of the particle is stored as potential energy and it has zero velocity or zero kinetic energy okay so for finding out the turning points what you would do is will actually put p equals zero so when you put p equals zero what we will have is uh, we get x equals plus minus cube root of p upon lambda so this will be your these will be your turning points now uh, in the phase space that is p and x space uh, what will happen is uh, if you take the integral from these uh, uh, one turning point to the other turning point so this will actually give you the area of the phase space and if the particle is not losing energy then this area will always remain constant okay so what will happen is uh, if uh, say we have c1 is our first turning point and c2 is our other turning point then p dx will give we, uh, give us a constant because it will give us the area of phase space so let me actually again explain so say it, it is p and this is x and in phase space we will have something like this okay and uh, these are the turning points from here to here okay these are the turning points so if you take the integral of p that uh, uh, like kind of you write the equation in the form of p and then you take the integral from this point to this point so you will actually get the area of this whole region okay so when you get the area of the whole region that means if the particle is not losing energy then this area will always remain constant that is what we have actually written over here now what we will do is we will integrate this expression and in doing so we can actually write pdx minus p upon lambda to the power 1 upon 3 and p upon lambda to the power 1 upon 3 equals we can actually write it like this <coughs> and p upon lambda to the power 1 upon 3 power 1 upon 3 okay now we can actually write it like this now again uh, clearly what you can actually do is you can clearly see that th this will be an e even function so what we do if we have the even function we kind of or uh, we kind of uh, multiplied by 2 and do like this 1 minus lambda upon e x now it will just be x okay it will just be x x cube dx okay so now what you can actually do is you can <coughs> you can put the value of x such that you will get a constant over here okay so let me actually sh uh, show you how you can do that okay so let us just put uh, x equals e upon lambda to the power 1 upon 3 u okay so uh, what you actually have to do is you have to put the value of x such that uh, this whole expression turn out to be a uh, value uh, which is independent of lambda or e okay uh, and uh, using the power of uh, calculus uh, we would convert this integral from 0 to e upon lambda to the power 1 upon 3 to an expression such that this uh, integral is from 0 to 1 or any other constant then what happens is that whole integral turns out to be a constant which you can actually ignore and you will just have some powers of e and lambda uh, proportional to each other in some way and after that you can actually put the values of lambda or e if the question asks you uh, to put the value of e 
then you can actually find out the ratios or whatever that you want to find out so over here uh, what we are going to do is we are just going to put x equals e upon lambda to the power 1 upon 3 2 so what will happen is we would have this integral in such a way that we have 2 2 me times now see uh, if x equals this then dx equals uh, this let me actually write it over here dx equals uh, e upon lambda to the power 1 upon 3 du okay and from this expression you can actually write the value of u in the uh, form of x so it will come out to be e upon lambda to the power 1 upon 3 okay so now if uh, uh, the value of x is 0 then value of u will be also 0 okay the integral goes from 0 to now if the value of x is uh, e upon lambda to the power 1 upon 3 then the value of u will be 1 okay so it will come out to be this expression okay so this is how you can actually convert the whole expression now yes so i forgot one more thing here we have e upon lambda to the power 1 upon 3 as well okay now we already know that this is a constant expression okay so we can actually treat this to 2 upon lambda uh, to m and everything uh, this will also be a constant whatever the expression come up to be uh, okay so we can treat them as constant and we can actually just write uh, something like like this so we have e to the power 1 upon 2 times uh, e to the power 1 upon 3 proportional to lambda to the power 1 upon 3 okay now clearly you can actually write e is directly proportional to lambda to the power 2 upon 5 okay now you can actually write e2 divided by e1 will be equal to uh, 2 divided by 1 to the power 2 upon 5 which will come out to be 1 point uh, that will come out to be 1 point somewhere around 1.319 and which is close to 1.32 okay so this uh, will be the correct answer the option is t okay so the next question is uh, pretty easy we have to just find out the ratio cp upon cv of the spec of the specific heat uh, constant pressure okay for monatomic ga gas in uh, two dimensions okay so in two dimensions uh, the monatomic gas can move in two directions that means the degree of freedom will be 2 and we know that uh, the ratio that is gamma equals cp upon cv is actually given as 1 plus 2 upon n and this will come out to be 1 plus 2 upon 2 that is 2 will be the right answer okay so now let's come on to the next question so the next question is uh, in the lci circuit shown below the resistance r equals 0 0.05 ohms the inductance l equals 1 henry and the capacitance uh, c equals 0 0.04 farad if the input v in is a square wave of angular frequency 1 radian per second the output v out is best approximated by a square wave of angular frequency 1 radian and the other option so clearly what you see over here is a voltage divider circuit so for finding out the v out you can actually uh, uh, write it like v out equals this resistance r divided by the resistance of this and this added in series okay so uh, we can actually write it like j omega l plus 1 upon j omega c i'm writing it in uh, j omega form because we have uh, it in a complex form okay so let us just write the magnitude of this equation so we will get v out equals r upon square root omega square l square plus 1 upon omega square c square v n okay so clearly what you see over here is uh, that the voltage output will be 
dependent upon the angular frequency so let us just quickly put the values of uh, r l and c so we get v out equals 0.05 ohms and then we get l is 1 just 1 so we'll just write omega square plus uh, c is 0 0.04 farad so we can actually write it like 1 upon omega square 0 0.04 squared v in now v out will come out to be 0 0.05 ohms divided by omega square plus 625 divided by omega square you can actually uh, calculate the value of this now uh, okay now uh, comes the interesting part of it okay so in the question it is given that we have a square wave but the square wave actually can be written like a Fourier series like this n equals 1 3 5 and so on up to infinity and 1 upon n sine n pi x over l okay now what will happen is we'll have several components of frequencies so uh, let us just say if we have uh, this l equals pi then uh, the things will simplify okay so what will happen is we can actually write v out equals 0 0.05 ohms divided by square root of omega square plus 625 divided by omega square and then we will have the components like this 4 upon pi sin x divided by 1 plus sin 2x divided by or uh, maybe we can actually write it like sin t or something like that but let's just go ahead with x okay 3 well it will be 3 actually 3 plus sin 5x divided by 5 and so on now uh, you will have to actually put the value of uh, uh, omega from this so this frequency is nothing but the omega and after putting the value of omega whichever comes out to be a, a larger number we will consider that to be an answer ok so clearly uh, for 1 what will happen is v out for omega equals 1 what will happen is 0 0.05 uh, ohms it will come out to be 1 square plus 625 divided by 1 square and it will give you 0 0.05 and this will come out to be close to 25 and this will be a very small number like close to 0 close to 0 so clearly uh, you can actually guess that uh, 1 is out of our options because for 1 the voltage is coming out to be a very small number 2 millivolts to be exact ok I am not going to take this 4 upon pi uh, under consideration because it will be close to 1 and uh, because 4 upon pi is 4 upon uh, 3.14 it will come out to be 1.3d something like that but let us just consider it to be 1 and it is not going to change anything because it is common for uh, every expression ok so for v out uh, omega equals 3 we can actually write 0 0.05 divided by omega square that is 9 plus 625 divided by 9 and it will come out to be let me actually calculate yes one more thing uh, for uh, omega equals 3 we will actually write 1 upon 3 as well and it will come out to be uh, 1.9 milli millivolts something like that now let us go ahead and calculate it for uh, v out for omega equals 5 ok so it will come out to be 1 upon 5 0 0.05 divided by under root uh, 5 that is 25 plus 625 divided by 25 uh, ok 
so it will come out to be let us just calculate and it will come out to be uh, 1.41 milli volts okay so there is no point in going further because the options just say uh, 1 and 5 radian per second but uh, clearly uh, our answer doesn't seem to match any one of them because in one option that we have 2 milli volts the answer should have been uh, this one radian sine uh, wave frequency but uh, clearly our calculation suggests that uh, the value uh, that it will we'll be actually getting will be similar in omega equals 3 and omega equals 1 cases but the actual answer is uh, omega equals 5 I think uh, the answer key says omega equals 5 because they must not have included this 1 upon 5 factor because if you don't include it uh, this will come out to be 7 millivolt or something like that that is why maybe the answer is this 5 radian per second sine wave but this could have been actually uh, kind of objected against ok so now let's come on to the next question the volume and temperature of a uh, spherical cavity filled with blackwood radiation are V and 300 K respectively if uh, it expands adiabatically to a volume 2 V its temperature will be closest to ok so for a black body uh, the temperature depends upon lambda uh, we know from Wien's displacement law that lambda t equals b so multiplication of lambda t lambda and t is a constant ok so uh, but your lambda is actually dependent upon the size of the cavity for an exam example you can actually do something like that so clearly if you increase the volume of the cavity adiabatically the lambda would change ok so we can actually say that lambda is directly proportional to r but over here you can actually say d but let us just say it is r because d is nothing but 2r ok now uh, clearly we have volume equals 4 upon 3 pi r cube so r is proportional to volume to the power 1 upon 3 right so lambda is proportional to volume to the power 1 upon 3 right now if lambda and t are uh, related with this relation we can actually write temperature is inversely proportional to volume to the power 1 upon 3 now clearly t1 divided by t2 equals uh, v2 divided by v1 to the power 1 upon 3 now we can actually write t2 equals v1 divided by v2 to the power 1 upon 3 multiplied by t1 so t2 equals uh, v divided by 2v to the power 1 upon 3 into 300 kelvin now v say v uh, cancel kar sakte hai now what you will get is 1 upon 2 to the power 1 upon 3 times 300 k which will come out to be 240 kelvin so this is the right answer ok now let's come on to the next question which says the figure below depict 3 a different wave function of a particle confined to a 1D uh, dimensional box minus 1 to plus 1 the wave function uh, that correspond to the maximum expectation value that is x absolute value of mean position and x square respectively r ok so here you have to actually uh, take care of this absolute sign ok so if even the value is negative it will come out to be positive ok so for this function clearly this function is odd ok and x expectation value come out to be 0 for this function it is not odd but it is not even either ok so it will 
give some value of or positive value of x because this area over here this area is higher than this area okay so when you do this uh, calculation that is minus 1 to 1 uh, psi star x psi dx which will give you the probability or oh, sorry not the probability the expectation value of x uh, it will be higher in this side because it has higher area uh, and lower at this side so the value will be slightly towards positive side furthermore uh, this c wave function is also odd this is odd and hence the expectation value will be zero of x so uh, in first that is uh, for the expectation value of x only b will give you the maximum value okay it will give you the maximum value so the option uh, can be uh, a or b okay now let's come to the x square uh, expectation value now for x square what will happen is we will have the wave functions like this okay now clearly if you take out the value of x square expectation it will most likely be either here or here and with a little probability to be here now if you take the average of all these probabilities you will find out that the particle is more likely to be on these positions that means uh, somewhere around 0 0.3 or 2.5 somewhere like that so x square will be uh, close to this value that means uh, 0 0.09 or something like that it will come out to be in this case the particle is more likely to be here or here okay if you take out the value of it now if you take out the value of x square the particle will give you some value which is uh, a positive value which is average of these values okay average of these values which will come out to be close to this value again okay close to this value but now when we talk about this function what happens is if you are calculating x square since these are very small fluctuations in the function when you take the square of the function they will come out to be a small number but if you take these fluctuations or these changes in the wave function or the position of the particle you will clearly see that the main position of the particle is more likely to be either here 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 or here okay so when you calculate the x square uh, function so it will more likely be like this like this and this and with small fluctuations like this and this and finally this okay so if you take the average of whatever the value that you are going to get you will get a value close to 1 that is x square expectation will be close to close to 1 or 0 0.8 whatever that number is close to 1 okay so clearly what will happen is this function is going to give you the highest value of x square okay so this option a will be the right answer okay so in the next question you have to actually uh, find out which will be the curve uh, which will correspond to the emf generated in this circular ring so in the question we are given uh, a condition t equals 0 at t equals 0 what we have is we have this circular loop and the magnet that we are given in the question is somewhere like this okay so this is north pole and this is south pole so it is in between the loop okay so uh, okay so clearly uh, we have to actually use Lange's law so Lange's law says that the emf generated in a loop is such that 
it opposes the change that caused it okay so uh, suppose uh, when this magnet will be forced to move towards this loop what will happen is if it is uh, having north pole at this side clearly the north pole will come out to be on this loop like this okay by saying north pole what i mean is uh, the direction of current okay so the direction of current will be uh, anti clockwise uh, or oh sorry uh, it will be clockwise in the frame of the observer so clearly uh, what we should be getting is something like this spike which is downwards okay so after the downward spike as soon as the magnet come out to be here and over here and now the south pole is actually moving away from the uh, loop what will happen is this loop will have north pole again but on this side like uh, the side facing the observer last time the side was opposite to the observer okay now there will be formation of north pole again on this loop but on the side facing towards the observer and the current will be in the anti clockwise direction which is actually taken as positive so what will happen is we will get a spike which is negative in current and then a positive spike and then it will come out to be zero so this should be the correct answer this one okay so now let us come on to the next question so the next question says the equation of motion of a 1d harmonic oscillator in the presence of dissipative force is given by this the general uh, form of the particular solution in the terms of constant a b etc is okay so uh, we have to actually find out the particular solution of uh, this expression okay so for finding out the particular solution what you actually uh, need to do is you have to actually write uh, one upon ft and then whatever the function is on the right hand side so this is non homogeneous uh, second order differential equation so what you have to actually do is uh, you have to write the function of d that is this thing and this 60 to the power minus 80 plus 40 square e to the power minus 2t okay so now let us just take this one first because it will be much easier to calculate uh, because it is just t okay so we have this equation over here so the equation is t square plus 10 d plus 16 okay y equals 0 all right now we have to actually find out the particular solution so uh, it will be uh, it will be p1 so 1 upon d square plus 10 d plus 16 and this is 60 e to the power minus 80 okay now uh, we know that when we have a multiplication of two functions over here we'll actually simplify it with uh, this e to the power minus alpha t first so uh, this will become something like this 1 upon f d plus whatever that is written over here that is 8 and then it will come out on this side 6 will also come out because 6 is a constant and we will have just t so it will be actually written as 1 upon d minus 8 squared plus 10 t minus 8 plus 16 e to the power sorry not e to the power it is just t okay so we will have 6 e to the power minus 8 t over here now if you solve this equation you will actually get d square and then you will get minus 16 d 
प्लस सिक्सटी फोर देन टेन डी माइनस एट्टी एंड देन प्लस सिक्सटीन सिक्स ई टू द पावर माइनस एट्टी टी सो इट विल कम आउट टू बी सिक्स ई टू द पावर माइनस एट्टी वन अपॉन डी स्क्वायर माइनस सो दिस सिक्सटी फोर विल जस्ट कैंसिल आउट सो विल जस्ट गेट माइनस सिक्सटी ओवर हेयर एंड वी कैन एक्चुअली सिंप्लीफाई इट लाइक सिक्स ई टू द पावर माइनस एट्टी वन अपॉन डी वेल लेट जस्ट एक माइनस सिक्स कॉमन सो इट विल कम आउट टू बी वन माइनस डी अपॉन सिक्स इनवर्स टी ओके नाउ यू कैन एक्चुअली सिंप्लीफाई इट बाय सॉल्विंग दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग विच वील एक्चुअली गेट माइनस ई टू द पावर माइनस एट्टी वन अपॉन डी वन प्लस डी अपॉन सिक्स प्लस डी स्क्वायर अपॉन थर्टी सिक्स टी सो वील गेट माइनस ई टू द पावर माइनस एट्टी वन अपॉन डी एंड वील गेट टी प्लस वन अपॉन सिक्स ओके नाउ विद द हेल्प ऑफ डी वी कैन एक्चुअली इंटीग्रेट दिस थिंग एंड वील गेट माइनस ई टू द पावर माइनस एट्टी टी स्क्वायर बाय टू प्लस टी बाय सिक्स प्लस सम कॉन्स्टेंट सी नाउ लेट्स कम ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट वन सो द नेक्स्ट वन इज फोर टी स्क्वायर टू द पावर माइनस टू टी ओके सो क्लियरली यू कैन एक्चुअली सिंप्लीफाई इट लाइक डी माइनस टू स्क्वायर प्लस टेन डी माइनस टू प्लस सिक्सटीन फोर टी स्क्वायर और यू कैन एक्चुअली जस्ट रिमूव फोर फ्रॉम हेयर यू कैन जस्ट राइट टी स्क्वायर एंड यू कैन ब्रिंग फोर इट द पावर माइनस टू टी ओवर हेयर ओके so now if you simplify this thing then you will again lose all the constant over here d square minus 4d plus 4 plus 10d minus 20 plus 16 t square now see uh 4 plus 16 is 20 and it will just cancel out this thing okay Now we'll get e to the power minus two t, one upon d square, and this will come out to be plus six d t square. Now you can actually uh, simplify it like you can actually just bring six t over here, one upon six t, and this will come out to be one plus d upon six inverse t square. Okay, so now we'll get two upon three to the power minus two t one upon d one minus d upon six plus d square upon thirty six minus d cube upon Uh, 36 times 6 t square. Now what will happen is you can actually simplify it like e to the power minus 2t 1 upon d. Then it will come out to be t square minus uh, 1 upon 3 t plus. Mm, it will come out to be 1 upon 36. And this will come out to be zero. So this can be written as two upon three 
e to the power minus 2t t cube upon 3 minus t square upon 6 plus t upon 36 plus some constant now if you don't mind the constant okay in both of the equations if you don't mind the constant then this thing can be written as t some constant a t plus b e to the power minus a t okay and in similar format if you don't mind this constant this can also be written as in this format t a t square plus b t plus c e to the power minus 2 t okay so in both of the cases we will get t outside okay so if you don't mind the constant however there will always be a constant over there uh, then this one will be the right answer the answer is c so guys so that's all for this vid video uh, i hope you would have liked this video and we have uh, covered all the questions from part b which you will be uh, kind of attempting there are i know there are five more questions uh, if you want me to solve them then you can actually drop a comment below and otherwise i'm going to solve part c questions next in the next video so i hope you do join on that one so thank you for watching